All right, I want to give a bit of a rant on WWDC 2010. Now, I know that I'm a little late on this, but better late than never. First off, the iPhone 4. I know with all the leaks and the Gizmodo drama, I still love the design of the iPhone 4. I liked it back then with the pictures that were released, and I like it now. I've always thought the design was more industrial looking and sleeker than the older models. There truly is so much to go over with the iPhone 4, and there are quite a few videos out there already doing a sufficient job of that. But one thing that I'd like to cover, which a lot of people are discussing, is the retina display. A lot of people are confused as to what is screen resolution and pixel density. Essentially, the iPhone 4 has greater pixel density. So, in the area of a traditional pixel, is inherently more pixels. They are increasing the number of pixels per that specific real estate area, thus giving you a clear picture, things like that. Whereas screen resolution is your entire screen real estate and the pixels within. Another thing about the iPhone 4 is that I find less reason to now jailbreak the iPhone. Apple is slowly chipping away at all of the reasons originally why I would jailbreak my iPhones. From copy to paste, multitasking, specific API application supports where you could get it within a jailbroken application versus a legitimate application. So while Apple may have been slow to deliver, nonetheless they are delivering. I mean, what can I say? I really don't have any other significant reasons to jailbreak. Suffice it to say, I do really like the iPhone 4. And I also pre-ordered one for my wife, which should be here within the next day or two. Moving on to the keynote, I wrote a lot of posts on Twitter and some disappointments and criticisms and things like that. And some of them I'm going to have to take back my words. You know, I'll leave my words on some of them. That goes to show that, well, many parts of the keynote I quite frankly wasn't interested in, whether you disagree with me or not. I feel back in the days where there was a Macworld and a WWDC that a lot of the information was kind of parsed out into regards of what is more internal development and what is more what I would consider just magical fluff. All pretty much combined now into the WWDC keynote. Nonetheless, when you watch the entire keynote, you finally can fast forward to the parts that you were more interested in. That being, one of my criticisms was about how mail was handled within the iPhone. And I must say that I really love what Apple has done with the new mail application. Specifically, you can do consolidated mailboxes, which I know is on other mobile platforms. But I also really love the threaded conversations within the email package itself and being able to delete the entire thread in that conversation. And of course, VPN support, exchange support, remote management, were all things that I have a lot of interest in that I'm glad to see are updated. So the only remaining criticism that I posted on Twitter would have been the use of widgets which you can find in other mobile platforms that I think would really complete the iPhone OS experience and it's likely to come in future releases. Let me quickly move to iAds as I made a whole video onto it of which I'm still in regards to say well, what is really creative and interactive enough. I will say the demonstrations that were given by Steve Jobs were fantastic and beautiful and that's a great example. I'm not sure how many advertisers will be willing to do that much creativity, but certainly companies that have a lot of capital could certainly produce some of those interactive experiences demonstrated in the keynote. The interactivity is the key part of it, and I feel that whatever anyone's opinion is on iAds, the main push for iAds, at least in my opinion, is that because there's not going to be any flash support, and to get interactivity in that media format, you need a platform to, to support it, thus HTML5, and thus Apple really having its own environment to deliver interactive media. The only thing that I would kind of be hesitant to purport is the numbers that Steve Jobs gave and, and the amount of revenue that all ads would make and the percent that Apple takes up of it. The only reason why that's large is that Apple has a much higher cost or price of entry into doing and working with iAds. 
All right, let's talk about some of the things not covered in the keynote, such as a lot of the developer APIs, which I think are very powerful, and finally have come to be whether they were anticipated or not, such as calendar access. But a big one beyond that would be in-app SMS. There's also a interesting API that I glanced at, haven't had the full time to research it yet, but it is an API called Carrier Information, as in cell carrier, AT&T, Verizon, what have you. And I'm very curious as to what this API is going to provide, and could it hence suggest more carriers coming in the future. Most powerful that I think, and I am really enjoying and going over in part of the sessions of WWDC 2010, is Xcode 4 coming out and a lot of the powerful features that I really like which is really die-hard geek stuff in that of the LLVM compilers but also Grand Central Dispatch of which many of you are like well huh there's not really multiple cores within the mobile platform nonetheless thread management can still operate and you can make it operate very efficiently even within a single core. And I really like that. If developers use Grand Central Dispatch within iOS 4, you will be able to see faster response within applications and especially efficient use of background services. Essentially, it's, a, it's letting developers let the intelligence behind iOS 4 to queue the proper threads and manage where they should be. Now let's talk a lot about the, the blogs going around and articles and things criticizing Apple and how development goes so on and so forth. Yes, Apple did revise yet again its iOS platform policy on third party applications. Things how if it's cross compiled so on and so forth. A big sticking point that I had previously. Essentially now it is worded to the point to where it should have been from the beginning in that it's just Apple's discretion on whether your application is approved or not. And all of the third-party tools, Unity 3D, MonoTouch, so on and so forth, the, the Lua scripting language, will all likely still be approved and life goes on. Of course the one remaining third-party compiler not allowed will be from Adobe and that being their toolkit that cross-compiles Flash into native iPhone code. I've already have my opinions on that and I'm not going to go and rehash that. But suffice it to say it is at Apple's discretion on what applications they will approve or not. Suffice it to say that these third-party compilers that try to help developers cross-compile to multiple platforms, it is in their interest to make their platform work with the newer platforms and provide those newer features. Or they're going to lose developers to other application environments or, or they're going to lose developers to other programming environments that do support some of those features that developers would like to use. So again, it is in their interest to keep up with the specialization of features that occur in a lot of these mobile platforms. Then there's criticism that Apple likes to lock their developers into Xcode. Apple's not really locking any developer into anything or doing anything different and that any other company would do. Yes, there is Objective-C, but Microsoft also has C-Sharp, which you could call an equivalent parallel to what Apple has. Many companies try to strive to make languages that work well or are optimized for their platforms, and that way they really do wish that developers go to their platforms and thus try to make it as easy as possible for developers to go to those platforms and try to support logistically less, if they can, being that able to concentrate more on less rather than concentrating less on a whole lot of avenues into a platform. In the end, there's always going to be a programming environment per platform, no matter the company, and there will always exist companies that provide ways to cross-compile to those platforms. I'd like to conclude in saying that Apple has released all of the sessions from WWDC 10 that if you are a registered Apple developer that you can have access to and see a lot of the powerful and great under the hood 
items now available within Xcode 4 or Apple's developing environment. Thanks for watching.